Deflation is a central banker's worst nightmare. And there are several reasons for this. The obvious one is that it increases the real value of debt. In deflation is funny. If you have cash, people hate cash because there's no yield. In deflation, cash can be your best performing asset. Because even though the nominal return is quite low, the real return can be quite high. If you have deflation of 2% and your money just stays constant, your money's worth 2% more because that's what deflation prices go down. So your money goes further. So it's worth more. In a world of 2% deflation, the real return on your cash is plus two, even if the banks pay you zero because it's worth 2% more. It helps creditors, but it hurts debtors. But who's the world's biggest debtor? It's the United States government. The real value of the U.S. debt, $31 trillion, would go up in a deflationary environment, and they don't want that. That's one reason. But the real reason, the more powerful reason, this is what keeps them up at night, they can't stop it. See, with inflation, the Fed has always been confident. You get inflation, okay, they don't want it, but it happens. But when it does, we can crush it with high interest rates. And that's what Volcker did, and that's what Jay Powell is doing right now. But when you get deflation, they don't have any tools. Now, they'll do QE. The QE is a joke. How does QE actually work? Well, the way it works is it's money printing of a kind. So the Fed buys bonds from dealers, from the primary dealers, by treasury notes or bills, etc. They call out, they get an offer, they say, done. The Goldman or City, whoever it is, sends the treasury notes to the Fed, and the Fed pays for it with cash that comes out of thin air. What do the banks do with the cash? They give it back to the Fed as excess reserves. So that money doesn't go anywhere. You're inflating two sets of balance sheets, the bank and the Fed. The money doesn't get loaned out. It doesn't get spent. It doesn't increase velocity. It doesn't create jobs. The money doesn't go anywhere. It just sits on the Fed's balance sheet. So you can do it. They did do it. They increased their excess reserves to $9 trillion back in the pandemic, back in 2020, but didn't do any good. The other thing they can do is take interest rates to zero, and they will. This is the famous pivot. Wall Street correctly anticipates the pivot in ways that the Fed does not. But where Wall Street gets it wrong is they think the pivot's a good thing in the sense of, oh, well, the Fed's going to over tighten and inflation's going to come down and they're going to realize it and pivot to interest rate cuts and so that's a soft landing and buy tech stocks. That's kind of how Wall Street thinks about it. Very kind of one, not even two dimensional. The reality is the Fed is blundering. They are raising rates. Inflation is going to come down. They are going to have to cut rates. They'll be the last to know, but they'll be cutting rates for a very bad reason, which is we'll be in a severe recession. Stocks will be down 30%. So the idea that you're going to have a Goldilocks ending or soft landing is not true. The Fed will pivot, but they'll pivot too late. The damage will be done and the damage to the economy, as they say, it will be severe. And getting back to deflation, they can lower rates to zero and they will, but then they're stuck. There's no evidence that negative interest rates are more easing, if you want to call it that. But everyday citizens in the United States, they look at that and they go, wait a second, why does the central bank have negative interest rates? They must be scared to death of deflation. And if they are, I'm going to save my money. I'm not going to spend it. Because first of all, the money will be more valuable, as I described. It also means there's a really bad economic outcome on the horizon which is exactly when you would want to spend less, save more, you know, build up cash reserves. So the idea of lowering interest rates into negative territory is, hey, you better go out and spend it because, you know, you're going to lose it if you keep it in the bank. But people do the opposite. They hoard it. It actually is worth more in real terms, as I described. So you get the opposite of what they think. But again, the economists lack common sense. So negative interest rates don't work. QE doesn't work. Nothing works. You can't get out of deflation. There's only one way out. And by the way, everything I'm describing actually took place between 1929 and 1933 during the worst stage of the Great Depression. FDR was sworn in. The first thing he did, like on the first day or second day, by executive order, he closed every bank in America, every bank in the United States. Can you imagine a president getting on TV today and saying, my fellow citizens, as of now, all the banks are closed, all of them. We'll get back to you when they reopen. His other problem was deflation. And the way FDR broke the back of deflation, and we had very good growth in 33, 34, and 35, he devalued the dollar against gold. And he raised the price of gold 75% from $20 an ounce to $35 an ounce. And it wasn't to enrich holders of gold. In fact, he confiscated all the gold first and then devalued the dollar. So it was like an inside trade. He had all the gold. So he took the profits for the United States Treasury instead of U.S. citizens. But that aside... He didn't do it to reward holders of gold. He did it to break the back of a deflationary psychology. What he wanted and what he got, if the price of gold went up, which it did, the price of corn, wheat, steel, energy, everything else went up. And he turned the deflation around, turned it into inflation. 1933 was a great year for the stock market. So was 1934. We had good growth. Unemployment came down. Stocks rallied. And then the Fed, you know, right on cue, screwed it up again in 1937. With premature monetary tightening, we went into a second severe recession in the middle of the Great Depression. 
But getting back to the point, what can a central bank do about deflation? The answer is nothing. But a government, a treasury, and a White House can devalue the dollar. Now, it doesn't do any good to devalue against euros or yen or, you know, the Chinese yuan or any other currency, because that's a race to the bottom. What my first book, Currency Wars, was about. You know, I devalue, then you devalue, then I devalue some more, and you devalue some more. We never get any further ahead. In fact, it's a negative sum game. But gold is different. Gold can't push back. If you devalue against gold, gold just sits there. They can't devalue. It's not a currency. There's no central bank of gold. So it's perfect for that. The problem today, of course, is that we're not on a gold standard. You can't break a peg that doesn't exist. So you don't even have the FDR toolkit from 1933. So deflation is one of the most serious economic problems you can have. It keeps the central bankers up at night because they know they can't do anything about it. And you can't even play the gold card because you don't have a gold standard. You don't have a gold peg. So it's a very, very serious problem. So touching on gold there for a minute, because I know you've been a big proponent of gold, you highlight that inflation, even at its average rate of around 3%, cuts a dollar in half in about 23 years. So if we start to see disinflation or deflation, and we just get down to like a 5 or 6% range, I mean, for a prolonged period, perhaps, how does an investor best protect themselves, whether it's gold or maybe some other assets? Let's just take 6% inflation. It's pretty high. 6% inflation cuts the value of the dollar in half in 12 years. Okay. 12 more years, it's half again. So from birth to the age of 36, which is just kind of your early mid career, whatever, the value of your dollar has been cut by 84%. That's with 6% inflation. Of course, you know, higher rates of inflation is even faster, but even 2% inflation cuts it in half in 35 years, half again in 35 years, average lifetime to the age of 70, your dollar has purchasing power has been cut by 75%. That's with 2% inflation, not that high. Why central banks think that's the target rate, I have no idea. The way I've described it is, it's like a little kid who sees a lot of money in his mother's purse, and it's like 50 bucks. If I steal the 50 bucks, I'll get caught. If I take two bucks, nobody will notice. So I'll just take the two. So the Fed figures a very low rate of inflation over a long enough period of time, diminishes the value of the dollar and helps to pay off the national debt. And that is what we did from World War II until 1980. The debt to GDP ratio went from 120% to 30% when Ronald Reagan was sworn in, but it's been going up ever since. So so that's why the Fed likes a little bit inflation, but not enough to notice, I would put it that way. But the danger is in trying to get there, they go too far because they don't really know what they're doing. They do in theory, but their models don't work. And they actually end up in this deflationary trap that we talked about now. Where does gold come in? Gold holds its value. It doesn't mean I have a lot of, I know a lot of people invest in gold. I talk about gold all the time. And they're like, you know, they, particularly the Austrians, you know, they're banging the table. We have to go back to a gold standard, get away from a fractional reserve bank, and let's have a gold standard. I said, well, be careful what you wish for, because if you have a gold standard, you're not going to make any money. The gold will be pegged, and that'll be that. You might as well, you know, go to sleep. It's only in a world without a gold standard where you have blundering central bankers that the price of gold goes up a lot and it preserves wealth. You know, I mean, gold's been going sideways for a few years at an interim peak of $2,039 an ounce in March 2021. So a little over a year ago, about a year and a half. But in 1999, it was $200 an ounce. And today, if it's 1800 okay, it's not 2000 but 1800 that's still nine times your money in about 23 years. So it does its job, but it's certainly in inflation, we've been talking about inflation, deflation, and the tug of war. We have inflation for the short run. We're going to have disinflation, borderline deflation early in 2023 because we're going to have a very severe recession. But if the Fed decides to print money to get out of the recession, then the inflation may come roaring back again. So it's like a pendulum, but gold will serve you very well through those cycles.